What ho! Pon yonder hillock! Tis Sir Vlogmore! Come once more. Pharmacist utilization, knowledge, I'm going to adjust my microphone. There we go. And opinion of the stop versus beers criteria. Palm Beach Atlantic University consent and authorization to be a research subject. Uh, let's skip down. Okay, so providing quality medication therapy to the elderly will always be a concern in the healthcare industry as they comprise one third of patients receiving prescribed medications. Adverse drug events, or ADEs, and inappropriate prescribing in the elderly population is on the rise and can result in increased hospital stay, increased medical expense, morbidity, mortality. And then one and two are her references down here. <clears throat> in response to a need of exact criteria for prescribing in the elderly, the Beers criteria were created in 1991 and have, been, uh, and have since been the gold standard in identifying potentially inappropriate medications, or PIMs, in the elderly population. I can't breathe through my nose right now, so I might have to take a deep breath every once in a while. Although the Beers criteria have been shown to be useful in detecting PIMs, it is believed that the Beers criteria is incomplete, outdated, poorly structured, and has limited data showing the clinical benefit of its use. A newer screening tool was developed using the Delphi method called the Screening Tool of Older Persons Prescription, or STOP criteria. STOP is similar to Beers in concept, but has many differences in design. It is the first physiological systems-based screening tool for the elderly population that is more up-to-date and specific than the Beers criteria. Since its development in 2007, there have been studies to compare the two criteria. Most notably was the first large-scale prospective study with results favoring the STOP criteria. That should have a reference at the end of it. <clears throat> Just immediately right there so I can go down and find out what that study is without having to read on. In this study, STOP detected more PIMs and avoided serious ADEs compared to Beer's criteria. While STOP has been in practice for several years, the awareness and utility of it in pharmacy practice is relatively low due to its recent publication in 2008. The objectives of this study are to determine the knowledge and level of comprehension of pharmacists in various practice settings with regard to STOP and Beer's criteria, to assess how often either tool is used, and to assess the perceived utility of the STOP and Beers criteria. It is our hope that this study will raise awareness of the criteria, resulting in implementation of both in a different pharmacy setting, which may, be, which may ultimately reduce PIMs and ADEs and improve patient outcomes. Procedures. We're going to be asked to complete a survey, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we don't care about the rest of that. So this came up on the mailing lists that I get uh, for pharmacy. And basically, it is a fourth-year pharmacy student, and she is conducting this survey kind of as a research project. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to find out what kind of questions they got here. Providing quality therapy, blah, blah, blah. This is just repeating what has already kind of been said. Okay, so community describes my practice setting. I'm actually also a student, but that's practice setting. How long have you been practicing as a pharmacist? Five years or less. I'm male. Uh, I don't technically have a PharmD yet, but let's pretend. Um, great. So now it comes down to the fact that I'm not technically a pharmacist. I plan to complete a residency, but I haven't. So I'm going to say no. Do you work full time? No. How many elderly patients do you come across at your practice site per week? Oh, gee, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to say 15 to 50 personally, I guess. What percentage of your patients are elderly? I would have to say, man, look at how huge this range is right here. I mean, you have 15 as the first cutoff, and then you have a range of 35, and then you have a range of 50, and then you have everybody else. And the same thing here, 10, 20, 45, everybody else. I don't agree with these uh, breakdowns of numbers. Anyway, what percentage of my patients are elderly? I'm going to say 30 to 75. I think it's closer towards the 30 to 50 range. But How often do you attend geriatric CEs? Never. I don't think I've gone to a geriatric CE before. CE stands for continuing education. And uh, it's just, they'll, it's like a lecture series or something. Uh, sometimes they'll have activities included in it. But it t teaches you or reinforces teaching about certain areas of pharmacy. What percentage of your medication therapy management services involve elderly patients? I do not perform MTM services personally. Which criteria for detecting potentially inappropriate medications in the elderly are you most familiar with? I am more familiar with the Beers criteria. I didn't know about the STOP criteria. How comfortable are you in using it? I'm moderately comfortable. How often do you use the above criteria to intervene in a patient's medication regimen? Sometimes. 
we had a patient in the hospital um, at the VA and he was an elderly man and he was taking um, an antidepressant but it's it works for some uh, for headaches and for sleep as well and he was taking it for sleep but you don't use those kinds of antidepressants in elderly patients because of all the side effects associated with them they tend to exacerbate side effects that old people already have um, and they increase the chance that they might have a fall and falls are really bad so uh, we switched him over to a different medication instead. Which criteria were you taught in the school to identify potential? I was taught the Beers criteria. What is the perceived usefulness of the Beers criteria in comparison? Well, I don't know. Neither is useful. <clears throat> Since I don't know anything about the stop criteria, I'm going to have to say that the Beers criteria are more useful because I know it. Which do you think is more accurate? have never seen the stop criteria. And I'm just going to copy and paste that. Which criteria do you think would detect a greater number? Other have never seen the stop criteria. <laughs> Which do you think would avoid a greater number of events? Other, there's no box this time. In light of recent studies, would you feel more comfortable using over the beers? not familiar with the studies. Do you have plans to implement in your practice site? Not familiar with the studies. Is the Beers criteria something that you feel is important to you? Oh, is important too. Yes, I feel it's important to physicians and pharmacists. The Beers criteria is a list of medications or kind of things about a medication. Um, but when we learned it, there was a nice big list to look at too. And they're kinds of medications that as far as possible, you avoid use in the elderly. Um, they have extra side effects. They have side effects that exacerbate things that already happen when you get older. They increase fall risk, um, things like that. And those are the kind of medications you don't want to use in an elderly person. And so you use an alternative agent uh, whenever possible. Sometimes they'll fail, you know, all medications except for the one that's on the beers list. Well, then you kind of have to just take it. But for the most part, there are alternatives. Um, so you should utilize them. And I think it's important for physicians in prescribing and pharmacists in making recommendations or seeing if, you, you know, well, making recommendations of what kind of medication if someone's asking them and then also making recommendations if they see someone who's on a medication that's on that list. I'm not familiar with the stop criteria. Way to put it way down here. Maybe that should be up further. Okay, I would feel comfortable giving an elderly patient medications that are not recommended according to the Beers criteria. Not comfortable as much. The, this, I guess, is just asking if, you know, they just started them up on one without going through all the medication failures and all the alternative agents, you know, but I, I'm not as comfortable with people on them. Would you feel comfortable giving an ed? Uh, we do not use the stop criteria. Advantages and disadvantages of beers. Yeah, I I, I'm not familiar with any of those. This is kind of crappy that I'm taking this one. I knew the beers one, so I thought you know with fifty with half knowing half of the stuff they're going to ask you about, it might be good. Oh, here's the beers criteria. <clears throat> All right. Um, it is believed it is incomplete, outdated. Blah 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 blah. Well, you could have showed me that earlier. All right. So. Yeah, so here you have types of drugs, and then you have what kind of concerns you have. And for example, the depression, long term benzodiazepines. What? That's not what I want. Syncope or falls. Where is the one? Oh, here it is. Arrhythmias. What? Under arrhythmias, tricyclic antidepressants. Under depression, long-term benzodiazepines. Wonderful. I'm. Th you don't use long-term benzodiazepines. I guess they're saying you don't use that kind of... Uh, when they have this disease state, avoid these kinds of medications. But we got a slightly different looking list. I think my professor put this into a better looking list for us. Oh, right, well, stop criteria. And then again, this is, seems to be just a list of... Uh, medications. Here's the tricyclic antidepressants, which you don't want to use in the elderly because they cause 
dementia, glaucoma, cardiac conductive abnormalities, constipation, stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> what is the perceived usefulness of the beers? Okay, stop criteria seems more useful. It's larger. Um, there's more stuff listed. So I think that is definitely useful. One of the things I don't like, let me see. The kind of the concern section here is a little bit larger. There's a little bit more uh, words to it, whereas down here it just says increased risk of toxicity and then nothing else. Um, so that is definitely something that I would like to see. Rather than just saying increased risk of toxicity and may, and you know hope, relying on the person knowing all the signs in, of the toxicity, having a little bit more, um, a little bit more detail to it. See here, I don't see where it, anywhere it says increases risk of toxicity. I see exacerbates constipation, exacerbates sciad, uh, CNS altering effects. That one's a little bit vague. Um, but here it lists, for example, anti-dopaminergic and cholinergic effects. You probably don't know what anti-dopaminergic or cholinergic effects are, but I, I learned about that, so I do. Um, but, I mean, just saying increased risk of toxicity doesn't really help as much. Okay, which do you think is more accurate in detecting PIMs? Well, I mean, they, they're both just lists of drugs, so I think they're both the same. Um, in detecting... PIMs that this one I guess isn't more accurate unless you're saying how many PIMs do you detect out of how many PIMs in reality regardless of what the list says but what is ultimately and you know transcendent truth that is a you know interacting medication like that I'm gonna say I'll say stop because I know you want me to. No, I think it's just because it's a longer list. And I don't think you want accurate as the word. That's not what I think you're asking me. Which criteria do you think would detect a greater? Okay, well, then I'm going to say neither stop. Stop is going to detect a greater number of PIMs because it probably has the exact same drugs that this does, but it's longer. So it's going to have even more. Which you think would avoid a greater number? Okay. If it's detecting more, it's probably going to avoid more. And that's the only thing there. Do you feel there's a need for new criteria? Sure, there is a need to improve the beer's criteria. Yes. If yes, please specify why. Had never seen the stop criteria before. That is why my opinion has changed. And I am authorizing the researchers to use and disclose my responses. Feel free done. Thank you for taking the survey. Now take more surveys for your chance to win and earn money for charity. Aw, yeah. No, not right now. I'm kind of busy. All right, until next time. Bye-bye.